Thank you for joining us for another power-packed message provided by Monroe Global Incorporated and MonroeGlobal.com. We transform followers into leaders and leaders into agents of change. We hope that this message is a blessing to you as you advance your life and discover your purpose. Now, let's go into the message. Humans don't want to die because deep in their hearts, they know that they have not finished what they were born to start. That's why they don't want to die. When a person has discovered their purpose and have fulfilled their destiny, they welcome death. Death never threatens a human who discovers their purpose. The Apostle Paul, for example, was not afraid to die. As a matter of fact, the Apostle Paul died willfully he decided to die Amen. let me quote him I quote I have finished my cause I have kept the faith I have been poured out like a drink offering and there's nothing left for me to do I am now ready to be offered Wow. He had this clear confidence about death. So please write these statements down, please. Very important. First, I want to talk to you about purpose and destiny. Write the two words down. And I want to focus on, in this first segment, the laws of of personal success from a kingdom perspective. Let's talk about success for a minute. Proceed. Now, success is something that every human wants. Everybody wants to succeed. But for you to succeed in life, there are five questions you must answer. And every human being on earth is trying to answer these questions right now including the person sitting in your chair right now these five questions control the human race these five questions motivate everything you do these five questions are so powerful that they create everything in this planet that humans do these five questions are the source of all of your problems they are the source of all the crime in your city. They are the source of all of your broken homes and divorce. They are the source of all corruption. These five questions are the source of every problem a human faces is in these five questions. In other words, our attempt to find the answer to these five questions is the cause of all of our behavior. As a matter of fact, you came here tonight and you're watching this program live around the world because of these five questions. I have reduced all of human life to five questions. Write them down. Number one, who am I? It's a tough question to answer. Most people have never asked nor answered that question because it's a frightening question. The average human never answers that question. Who am I? The second question that you must answer to become successful in life is where am I from where am I from again 99% of the world's population never answers that question that question has nothing to do with your ethnicity where am I from the third question every human must answer to become successful on this planet is why am I here why was I conceived? Why was I born? And I am certain that most of you sitting here in this room still have not answered that question. Why am I here on this planet? The fourth question every human must answer to be successful is what can I do? What can I do? That question has to do with what am I capable of? Again, 
over 90% of the world's population haven't answered that question. And the last question every human is grappling with is the question, where am I going? Where am I going? It is the question of destiny. Where am I going? Now, the first question, who am I, is a question of identity. Write it down next to it. The average human is still struggling with self-identity. That is why most of us are other people. For example, you wear Michael Jordan. You don't wear yourself. You wear Pierre Cardin. That's oppression. You wear FUBU. You wear Sean Jones. These are people. Because you ain't got no identity, you want to be like them. So you need to put on other people's identity to feel important. You are sick. That's why your children are in gangs today killing each other just to wear a Nike shoe. Because they're trying to get identity. They would kill for a coat suit. In other words, that's why you wear your weave. Oh boy, I'm getting deep now. And you want to dress like other people. That's why you follow the styles of the day. Because you have no identity, so you try to keep up with other people's style. You are battling with this question of, who am I? And some of you have lost your true self. You look like other people. It's a sign that you are battling with the question. You hate your own face. So you try to look like other people. You hate your own size. So you hurt yourself trying to be like other people. You, you, you just kind of can't find this, who am I? So you end up being somebody else. And that's why the entire industry of fashion is built on your lack of self-identity. They feed that by selling you other people's images. The second question is what? Where am I from? That's a question, write it down, it's a question of heritage or source. You know, most of you would ask the question, where am I from? You say, well, I'm from Africa. That ain't true. <laughs> I'm from Jamaica. That ain't true. I'm from Trinidad. That ain't true. I'm from Mexico. I'm from Brazil. That's not true. Some of y'all are so mixed up, you don't know where you came from. <laughs> you check your granddaddy, he was white. And your mama was black. So how can you say you black? You mixed right up. <laughs> If you try to find out where you are from by using your ethnic heritage, you would get lost. And here's the problem. You can never know who you are until you find out where you are from. So we got a problem. That's why you can't find out where you are from because you don't know who you are. And that is why you don't know who you are because you don't know where you're from. So you battle with this question. Where am I from? The third question is what? Why am I here? This is the most difficult one that people battle with. It's the question of purpose. And that is why we're going to deal with that tonight. Because this one is tied to the other two. If you don't know where you are from, and don't know who you are, you'll never know why you are here. It's the question of purpose. The fourth question, what can I do, is what? Potential. Potential means, what is my true power? 95% of the people in this room are living below their ability. Guaranteed. You are only using 10% of your brain power right now. Who you are has never been discovered. 
What you are settling for disappoints God. What you are proud of, God is ashamed of. In other words, I discovered that to be a genius, all you got to do is use 1% more of the others of your brain. And they call you a genius. That's how mediocre our culture is. What can you do? What is your true ability? The problem is, our culture attempts to tell us what we can do. The educational system of your city is your greatest problem. Because they attempt to judge your potential by their exams. And in one given week, they give you a test. And when you get a C, they say you are an average human. How dare they? You just had a bad day, that's all. That's why most of the greatest people on earth are people who never finished school. That includes Bill Gates. Because the educational system don't have the mechanism to measure how much you know. That's why I don't trust any system on earth. You are so smart, they can't measure your intelligence. Do you understand what I just said? Are you sure? So won't you, don't believe anything they told you about you. Some of you are still living under an exam you took 20 years ago. And they told you that you are not artistic. That you cannot calculate. You can never be a, 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 a professional in arithmetic. You cannot, you cannot add and multiply. And you believe them. And even today you're afraid of a calculator. Because you believe them. The Bible says, let God be true. And trust no man. That's why I don't trust any of your opinions of me. I'm telling you now. What you think about me don't mean nothing to me. So keep your thinking to yourself. I didn't come here for you to like me or approve of me. I like me before you met me. And I approve of my ability in God. You can't touch this. You might as well clap your hands. Get over it. Come on, clap your hands. This is very important. In other words, you and I must be careful not to allow people to judge us. I want you to take a look at this. These questions are the questions of life. And they summarize everything about humans. Take a look at this next point. And this is very critical. Write this down, please. The desire for every human being is to succeed. Everybody wants to succeed. Now, success is predictable. What did I say? Success is predictable. You know, I keep telling people this, but they don't believe me. You can predict success. But the problem is, Failure is also predictable. What do I mean? You can predict if a person will fail before they fail. Because life is designed that way. You can also predict a person's failure. Life is designed that way. And why is success predictable? Write this down. Because life is designed to function by laws life is designed to function by law god designed life in such a way that he makes success controllable what i am today i decided to become yes this is very important what i'm saying 
you should stop blaming people for your state in life. Whatever you are right now, you decided to be. That includes broke, busted, poor, and ugly. Whatever you decided, <laughs> that's what you are. In other words, <laughs> life was designed for you to succeed because God needs you to succeed. Your success is good for God for a reason. God built success into creation because the success of everything God created affects his reputation. <clears throat> Write that down, Pastor. What did I say? The success of everything that God created protects God's reputation. Do you understand what I just said, man? You think so? Yeah, you ain't quite sure. Okay, I'm going to help you out. See, when I discovered this, I became dangerous. And I discovered it when I was 16 years old. I was the way I am right now when I was 16. Bold and strong. No fear. Do you know why? I discovered this. That God created me. He designed me to succeed. And my success was in his best interest. Mm -hmm. Let me explain why. Every product that a manufacturer makes, he puts his name on it. Am I right? Yes, sir. Your shoe has a name on it. Your dress has a tag with a name on it. Your purse got a name on it. Your car got a name on it. Your iPad got a name on it. Your telephone has a company's name on it. They got the image on it. You have an apple on some of that stuff. Is that apple? Mm-hmm. Mercedes-Benz got a symbol. Their name. That symbol or name is called, write this down, it is called image. Rolls-Royce has an image. Mercedes-Benz has an image. Apple has an image. Microsoft, the little flag, is an image. And when they finished with the product, the last thing they put on the product is the image. Listen to me carefully. I'm going to repeat it again. The last thing a manufacturer puts on a product is their image, their name. I'm going to say it one more time. The last thing, I want you to go and visit any manufacturer. Go down to Detroit, visit the car factory. They don't put the name on until the car is finished. Go to Apple computers and see how they make computers. The name don't go on until it's finished. The last thing they put on your coat suit, this little tag, is when it's finished. You always put the image on when it is finished. Let me describe finish for you. <laughs> so you're getting it, yeah. Okay. This telephone, thank you, sir. This telephone, <laughs> now I'm talking about God now. Watch this. This telephone came from a manufacturer. This telephone was finished before they sold it. No product leaves a manufacturing plant until it has been tested. I'm about to shout hallelujah. I'm speaking tongues all by myself. I'm going to say it again. No product ever leaves a manufacturing plant until it is tested. And they test every one of them. They pay people in white suits all day all they do is when it comes they test it make sure everything is working they test it then they go to the end of the line and they put their image on it and they put it in the box in other words when you get a new product it's not new mm. <laughs> that means no creator allows any product to leave the plant Unless it was already finished. 
tested. They are so sure it can work that they put on top of it in the box a book. <laughs> and the book has in it a lot of promises. Glory, hallelujah. And that book promises you all kinds of things. It says this phone will make phone calls. How do they know that? They have already tested it. This phone can connect to the internet. How do they know that? They already tested it. This phone can send text messages. How do they know that? They've already, this phone can collect voicemails and keep them for you. How do they know that? It's already being tested. This phone battery can last for eight hours. How do they know that? They already tested for eight hours. So when they put their image on it, that's a sign that it's not beginning. Oh, glory, hallelujah. Now they put this book in the box. Now, in the back of the book, they always put two pages. Most of you never read the book. I want to ask a question, but I won't. I don't want to embarrass you, but I'll try it anyhow. How many of you read every page of your manual for your refrigerator? Your car? Your iPad? Your VCR? That's why your light's still blinking. <laughs> Am I right? Yeah. yeah. When you bought that VCR 20 years ago, you only learned four things. Stop, rewind, pause, and play. That's it. Now, it has 22 functions. You only know four. That's it. Turn it on, turn it off, record, play. That means you are not operating on all 24 of its potentials. You are living below its privilege. You are abusing your own VCR. And some of y'all are just like the VCR. Get up, go to work, go to bed, eat. Get up, go to work, go to bed, eat. Get up, go to work, go to bed, eat. Get up, go to work, oh, eat, and then go to bed, sorry. <laughs> That's it. <laughs> Stuck. Because you never read his manual on your life. <laughs> the last two pages in that manual always has two words. First page says warranty. The second page says guarantee. Amen. These words are different. Wow. Warranty means we put our entire company behind this product. If anything goes wrong, if any defect exists, if it doesn't work, we have a warranty that if you ship it back to us, we will pay for the shipment. We will repair it at our expense. We will put in the new parts from our manufacturer. We will ship it back to you or we will replace it brand new at our expense. We will pay to get it back to you. Now, these people don't even know you. So why would they spend all of that money for you to ship it back to them at their expense? For them to repair it at their expense? For them to ship it back to you at their expense? For them to actually give you a new one at their expense? They don't even know you. The answer, because none of that is about you. Uh. They do all of that for themselves. They do it for their namesake. They are protecting their reputation. Oh Lord, have mercy. 
Somebody say, thank you, Jesus. I feel like running right here. Praise the Lord. So when a manufacturer replaces a part and ships it back to you, it's not because of you. That's why sometimes they will recall their products at their expense. They will repair it at their expense. They say the cars purchased in 1920, 190 <laughs> something, 1913. They say if you purchase the car in May 2013, bring it back to us at our expense. We will fix it at our expense. It will cost us $600 million, but we don't care because there's nothing more expensive than our name. In other words, the success of their product protects their reputation because they put their name on it. When God decided to create a product called man, mm -hmm. Jehovah Universal Manufacturing Plan kicked in. Adonai Manufacturing International decided to create a product called man. And God tested you before he put his image. You still don't get it. That's why the first thing God said is actually the last thing he said. Let us make man. And we will put on him our image. Oh, Father, help me explain this. You did not begin when God created you. I'm going to say it again. Write it down. Write it down. I did not begin when God created me. I want to prove it. God said to Jeremiah, before you was conceived. Can I say it just one more time? Before you was conceived in your mother's womb, I already tested you. Cobra Satemo. So if I say you are a prophet, that ain't no introduction. Come on, Sister Cheryl. I'm telling you what I already tested. Jeremiah, you are a prophet. Why? I already tested you. Say, neighbor, I'm bad out there. <laughs> Tell you, neighbor, what I am? I already am. But you haven't seen it yet. Somebody scream and clap your hands real loud right there. Just, just, just get that right there. You understand? You understand? This is why your teacher can't measure you. You came to earth because you are finished. <laughs> oh, dear. Come on. Everything in this iPad came in the iPad. You don't buy the iPad and then look for stuff to put in it. Oh, you all don't read the revelation. Come on, come on. When God released you, you came with everything. Somebody scream, hallelujah. Now you got an iPad with 500 functions. But you're only using 10. And you think you deep. Say, neighbor, you ain't seen nothing yet. But I'm going to manifest on you. I'm going to say it again. Tell your neighbor, you ain't seen nothing yet. But I'm going to manifest on you. You're going to see my hard drive. Somebody scream right there. Just scream. Just scream. 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 Get it. 
Tell your neighbor, for the last 10 years, all you saw was my desktop. Somebody clap your hands. Hallelujah. That's why you shouldn't judge no person. is built into the product. You were not born to find your purpose. You were born with your purpose. That's why your dreams are so big, son. And you're afraid of your own self. Because your culture has told you who you should be. They have no idea who you are. That's why you must let God be true. And every other product a liar. Don't get your measure from other products. Write this down. No one knows a product like the manufacturer. Tell your neighbor, mind your own business. You don't know who I am. So keep your thoughts to yourself. <laughs> I want you to take a look at this. Write this down. Number two. Success in life is a result of the decisions you make. This is very important. Because failure in life is also a result of your decisions that you make. In other words, everyone comes to earth, but they decide how much of themselves are manifested. See, only one person got my revelation just now. I'm going to say it again. Everybody comes to earth, but you decide how much of you is manifested. And that's why God sent me to you tonight. Because you've been living a lie. You've accepted what they told you. If you know who you really are, you'll be afraid to meet yourself. You beat 499 million others to get where you are today. You better give God a big shout there, brother. You better give God a big praise. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Good news. Good news. Good news. Good news. You don't have to try and win in life anymore. You are here because yes. you won. Yes. Come on, give God a praise. You... Somebody shout hallelujah. Somebody shout praise the Lord. Now you see why I am so bold. I won. Tell your neighbor, I won the race. race. Tell your neighbor, I came out a winner. winner. I'm not trying to win. I already won. won. Give God a big clap off and right there. Praise God. Now, here's the good news. He would not have allowed you to begin unless you were already finished. Now read the next statement in the verse. Read it. He says, read it. Are you sure you get it? He says, I make known from ancient times what is yet to come. Now what he means is when you 
arrived. Because you are finished, your finish came with the start. So your future is not ahead of you. God never places the future of anything ahead of it. You ain't never heard this before. That's why you need to hear this now. God will never put the future ahead of anything. Why? Because he's finished. Your future is trapped within you. You came with your end in your beginning. Now he says, I make known from ancient times what is yet to come. How can he make known what is yet to come? Because what is yet to come has already came. He began with the game. Then he made the yet. Which means that God put inside of you who you really are. Mm. But who you are is trapped inside of you. Mm. Now he says, when I show you what's ahead of you, you can see it. That means I will not allow you to see what does not exist already. I'm getting ready to go home. Listen to me carefully. This is why, please help me. This is why God told you to grow old, but never to grow up. You're confused, huh? Okay. See, your problem is you have grown old. And they destroyed your thinking. Do you remember when you was a child? Do you remember that you believed everything you thought? Then you started to grow old. And they told you, stop being unrealistic. Come back to reality. Stop daydreaming. <laughs> These are dream killers talking to you all through your life. First, it began with your own parents. Right. Woo, son, hmm. just get a job, son. Just yeah. get a job. Go to school, get a job. <laughs> These are dream killers. That's right. Come on. Don't study what you feel like study. Study what gets your money. Mm. And they kill your dream. And they say to you, stop being childish. You can never be the mayor of this city. Settle down and go be a bus driver. You ask a child, what do you want to be? I want to be a doctor. Son, you're going to be a carpenter. And you kill the dream of the kid. Can I suggest to you that who you really are is the thing you thought of first. That's why you are depressed right now. You are not happy on that dumb job you're going to. That's why you hate Monday mornings and hate traffic because you are going to something you are not. They killed you. So Jesus comes back to earth 2,000 years ago and he says these words. If you want to live in my kingdom, in my country, you got to reverse your life. Mm. Except you become like a little child again, he says. You cannot enter my country. Mm. That's your problem, man. You grew up too much. Mm. They made you an adult. That's why you can't pay your mortgage. You're struggling with your phone bills.
You are exactly what they told you you are. They destroyed you. Look at you, man. You're just making a living. You're not making a difference. You are surviving, not impacting the world. I make known the end mm. from the beginning. In other words, I show you who you are mm. from the beginning. Mm. Go back and go pick up your childhood dream again. That's who you are. Come on. Come on. Twelve years old. Twelve years old. I must be about my father's business. I wonder who are you? Trapped on the inside. Screaming for release. Trapped under a culture that doesn't believe in you. And I've come to tell you the truth, that's all. And the truth that you know will set you free. Amen. Free from what? The lies they told you. If you don't believe me, read the last part of the verse. He says, I say my purpose will stand. He said, that thing right there is my purpose for your life. It's already finished. And it will stand. Now, write the word stand down. That word stand doesn't mean that it's standing up. Stand means it will frustrate you. That means you will never be happy doing anything else. Exactly. That means you cannot change what you were born to do and be. So it will always frustrate you until you do it. It will stand. Verse 11, he says, as a matter of fact, from the east I will summon a bird of prey. From afar, Land, a man will come to fulfill my purpose. What I have planned, I will do it, he says. What you are can never be changed. It can be suffocated. You can take it to the cemetery, but it can never be changed. You are a great woman. But look at you. Look what you've settled for. You are a security number. Mm. They've reduced you to a number. That's all you are. A number. That's how they know you. That's how they follow you. That's how they check on you. You are number. You know what God told David? Do not number the people. You know, tomorrow morning is going to be one of the most important mornings in this city. You better sign up for tomorrow morning. Because mm. tomorrow morning, I'm going to show you how to find your purpose. Mm. Mm -mm. If you don't find it, you will always be depressed. Mm. That event tomorrow, some of you think it's not for you. It's for you. Your success is your purpose. And until you find it, you will never be satisfied. Let me give you one last scripture before I pray for you. Turn to Proverbs chapter 19. Proverbs chapter 19. Tell your neighbor something's coming. 
Get ready for it now. Proverbs chapter 19. Find it in your Bible. On your iPad, iPhone. Don't let the devil distract you right now, please. Because the last thing Satan wants you to know is your purpose. Purpose is the only thing that is right for you. I'm going to say something important. Listen to me carefully because you need to hear this. Please listen to me. Listen. The enemy of right is not wrong. The enemy of right is good. And Satan's number one weapon against you is to get you to do a good thing. Because he knows you are too smart to do a wrong thing. Some of you are going to get it after I'm gone. Your problem is you're doing a good thing. And Satan made sure you did it. So you can never do the right thing. So he distracts you with good things. That's why you have a job. But you never found your work. This city told you to get a job. And they train you to get a job. And they hire you to get a job. And then they retire you from their job. Then they fire you from their job. There's a big difference, madam, between your job and your work. Your job is what they pay you to do. Write it down. Your work is what you were born to do. Your job gives you finances. Your work gives you fulfillment. You can be fired from your job. You can never be fired from your work. Your job is your skill. Your work is your gift. They can take away your job. They can never take away your work. That's why Jesus never called anything he did a job. I came to do the work of my father. I work because my father works. Therefore I work. I work the works of my father. I came to finish the work my father gave me to do. It was my work, not my job. His job was carpentry with his daddy. His work was redeeming the human race. I wonder if you found your work yet. That's why you hate Monday mornings. Because every Monday morning, you're going to something you are not. Have you ever heard people say this job is killing me? You are correct. Because the stress that it's giving you is causing you to have high blood pressure, diabetes, depression, and cancer. You're not built for stress. So your job kills you. When you find your work, it gives you life. 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 
Your purpose preserves you. Yes. I want you to go to the book table. Please, I beg you. I'm not trying to sell books. Hey, I'm free. I have a jet parked over there with my name on it. I was born in a family of 11 children. One mother, one father, 11 children. On an island seven miles wide, 20 miles long, in a wooden house in the poorest village on my island called Bainstown. I was born in that two-bedroom wooden house with 11 children, one mother, one father. My father and mother slept in one room with a partition. My seven sisters slept in one room. And boys, four of us, slept on the floor. I remember sleeping on that wooden floor with rats running over my bodies in the night. Blood all over my bodies every morning. From mosquitoes eating me alive in that heat in the island of the Bahamas. I remember when it rained, the water would come dripping on me. I'd get buckets and put along the floor and sleep around the buckets. Don't tell me about poverty. One pair of shoes for the whole year and put cardboard in it when it grew holes. Went to school barefooted. I know what it is to eat corned beef for Sunday dinner out of the can and have a chicken neck on special occasions. Don't tell me about poverty. And my father was a Baptist pastor. So don't tell me about religion. It doesn't help. That's why I preach the kingdom. Yes, sir. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. The kingdom taught me my purpose. And I became free from jobs. I went to university with no money. My parents never paid a cent for my college degrees. I got three bachelors, a master's, and five doctorate degrees. Not one cent from my parents. I used to send money home to my parents in college. I know what I'm talking about. You gotta find your purpose, man. No one can keep a man down who knows his purpose. It's like a seed becoming a tree. You can't stop it. Once you put it in the right environment. Mm. Mm. I believe God sent you here tonight to start over. Give him a little praise. Just worship him for a second. Come on, worship him a little couple of minutes. He sent you here, young man, to start over. Abraham didn't start until he was 75. There's hope for you. Tell your neighbor there's hope for you. This church is not all you were born to do. Don't park here. Your dream is not what you're in right now. That's not what you dreamt. This is not what you dreamt. You know that's true. That ain't what you saw. This is not what you saw. Where you are is not what you saw, then what you are in is temporary. Right. I'm going to say just one more time for somebody to get it. If what you are doing is not what you saw, then what you are doing is temporary. Yes, sir. Yes. I want you to go to work on Monday morning. From now on, I want you to smile when you walk into your job. And tell everybody, good morning, everybody. I have an announcement to make. This place is my temporary employment. Somebody shout hallelujah. Oh, come on, scream hallelujah. The house you live in ain't the one God showed you. 
Oh, come on, somebody. The car you're driving, that ain't the one you saw. Oh, come on, give God a big praise right there. Somebody need to hear that. Hallelujah. Oh. Yes, hallelujah. I want you to go outside and sit in your car and say, tell your neighbor, this is my temporary transportation. If what you see is not what you saw, then what you see is temporary. Do you understand, sir? Proverbs 19, verse 21. Let's read it together. It says, I am reading from the NIV, which is the best translation I've ever discovered. It says, many are the plans in a man's heart. Watch this now. But it is the Lord's purpose that will stand. Oh my God. One more time, read it with me. Many are the plans in a man's heart. But it is the Lord's purpose that will prevail. God says you got all these plans about your life. What you want to do, where you want to go, what you want to build, who you want to marry, what kind of company you want, what kind of ministry you want. He said all these plans you got. He said look, I already got a purpose for your life. This scripture means three things. Write them down. Number one, purpose is more powerful than plans. Number two, purpose is more important than plans. And number three, purpose precedes plans. I repeat them. Purpose is more powerful than plans. How do I know? He says it will prevail over your plans. Purpose is more important than plans. He said, before you make plans, I already got a purpose for your life. And purpose precedes plans. That means before you was even conceived to make a plan, I already had a purpose for your life. Now remember, God don't start until he's finished. You already finished. That's why your dreams are so big. You're seeing your end. For the joy that was set before him, he could endure the cross, the shame, the malignment, the criticism. Why? He already saw the end. He saw himself sitting on the throne, reigning. I wonder what you see. Stop being afraid of yourself. Stop being afraid of yourself. Stop settling for this, man. Go back to your dream. The one that won't quit. The one that you're smothering with your busyness. Become a child. I told my daddy years ago, I said, Daddy, I want to travel around the world and I want to advise governments. My father says, do you believe this is possible, son? I was 14. I said, yes. He said, then, I don't know how, but you must believe it. My father told me the same thing that Joseph's father told him. Joseph had a dream. He saw himself sitting on a throne. And his brothers were bowing to him. And he was the youngest. And he was feeding them. He woke up. Ran to his father. He says, Father, I had a dream last night. I saw myself sitting on a throne, ruling. And all of my brothers and even you were being fed by me. He said that when he was a dirty little shepherd boy in the back of the hill. With smelly sheep. He saw his end. His father didn't understand, but he simply said, Son, keep these things in your heart. 
He didn't do what some parents would do. Get that foolishness out of your head, boy. Grow up and be a man. Get a job. Good parents don't kill children's dreams. Mm. Write it down, write it down. You feed your children's dreams. You don't kill them. Look what you've come to, man. Look where you are. This is not what you saw. You're a victim. I mean, tell me the truth about yourself. When you was 15, what did you dream? When you were 22, what were you thinking? This is not what you were thinking. You're still struggling trying to pay light bills. That's why God sent me. He's telling you, you can start again. You can start right now. Get back to your dreams. This is not who you are. What are you doing here at this state in your life? This is not who you are. You know it. You dreamt of traveling all over the world. You dreamt of becoming a missionary to help people. And you're stuck on a job. Go back to your dream. I learned something years ago, Pastor. Listen to me carefully. God is only obligated to finance his own programs. <sighs> Many are the plans in a man's heart, but the Lord's purpose will prevail. This is just introduction. I want you to think about your life. People think I'm a pastor. No. Just a small phase of my life. You should see what I'm dreaming. Mm. My life is bigger than pastoring. That's why I already ordained my replacement two weeks ago. This is no place to hold on to. Develop people. Create your replacement. So you can go on to the next phase of your life. You're bigger than who you are. Peter thought he was a fisherman. Wow. I feel like Jesse tonight. Samuel, go to Jesse's house. In that house in Baltimore is a king. So he went to the house, Prophet Samuel. And he said to Jesse, the Lord said there's a king in this house. The next king of Israel. The next mayor of this town is in this building tonight. The next city councilwoman is here tonight. The next chairman of the board of education is in this room tonight. I wonder who's here tonight. Are you stuck on a dumb job? There's a king in this house. And Jesse said, I got 12 sons. He said, bring them out. The first one came out, tall, good looking. Sam says, no, it's not him. 
For the second one out, he was handsome. I said, no. Third one out, well educated. No. Fourth one out, muscular. No. Everybody come out looking good. And when he reached number 11, he said, that's it. Everybody's counted for. And the prophet says, none of them is the king. The king is in this house somewhere. And the father says, well, I don't have no more sons. He said, but the Lord said, there's a king in this house. I wonder who's in your house. And his father suddenly remembered. See, you are the black sheep they forgot. They call you the black sheep of the family. They, you're the one they forgot. He said, just remember, I got one little boy, but it can't be him because he's the dirtiest, the smelliest, the youngest, out in the bush with the sheep. The prophet said, go get him, bring him here. I tell your neighbor, I'm the one they forgot. Somebody scream, I'm the one they forgot. Say it loud, I'm the one they forgot. No one knows your greatness. Trapped in the bush with sheep. I wonder who you really are. They went and got the little boy. And the Bible said David was bow-legged. The Bible used the word ruddy. Ruddy means he was full of freckles. Dirty. Bow-legged. Yes, daddy. He says, come inside the house, kid. He walks in. Smell like sheep. Filthy. And as soon as the prophet turned around and looked at the boy, his hand began to reach out toward the oil. He says, here comes the king. Amen. Trapped in a shepherd boy was the king of Israel. I wonder who's trapped in you. I have come to pour oil on your head to tell them they don't know who you are. Yes. 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 They thought you was the least in the family. You never amount to nothing. All you do is make trouble and get a job and die paying mortgage. And God says, not a thing like it. You're the owner of a business. There's a king. There's a queen sitting in your chair. Let us pray. Go ahead and pray for yourself right now. Just pray. Pray what you feel right now. Back to God. Just pray back to God. Come open your mouth. Pray. Say, Lord, I want to be what you want me to be. Help me discover who I really am. Show me myself. Let me see who I am. Speak to us, Lord. Reconnect with yourself. Nobody knows you. Nobody knows who you are except the manufacturer. Accept no one's opinion anymore. Be delivered from historical labeling. Meet yourself again. Go back to your childhood. Be childlike. Believe what he showed you. Thy purpose be fulfilled, O oh Lord. Forgive us, O oh Lord, for being someone else. Deliver us, O oh Lord, from being someone else. Prevent us from being like other people. No more imitation. 
I want to be myself. Lord, you showed me. Now show everyone who they are. You did it for me, Lord. You can do it for everyone in this room. And the thousands watching this program around the world live, wherever you are, you are not a mistake. You won the race for a reason. You won the race for a reason. That's why he brought you out of the hood. To meet yourself. Father, I have delivered your word to your people. I have done my duty. Now, Holy Spirit, it's your job. Work on us, O oh Lord. Oh, Heavenly Father, thank you. There are books in here, unwritten. Get busy. Start writing. Magazines that should be published. Go back and start again. Daycare centers to be established. Stop procrastinating. Put it on paper. Music to be produced. What are you waiting for? Poetry to write. Do it. A school to build. A company to start. A cosmetology center. Go do it. Don't look for employment. Look for deployment. Dream no small dreams again. And start right where you are. Don't wait for the big break. Start right where you are. Do not despise small beginnings. His end is already finished. Heavenly Father, thank you. The greatest people in the world are in this room. Many here will die in other countries. They shall see the world. Their dreams shall be reality. For you will never allow us to see what's not already there. Thank you, Father. Thank you once again for listening to this message, as we hope that it has been a blessing to you. Our goal is to show you new paths and opportunities so that you can discover your purpose.